Hey there, Mr. Weaver here with Unit 1, Lesson 5 of our Scale Models Unit. And this lesson is about the size of the scale factor. So, after this lesson, you need to be able to describe the effect of a scale copy when the scale factor is greater than 1, less than 1, or equal to 1. And you also need to be able to explain how your scale factor going from one shape to the other, from A to B, relates to the scale factor in reverse, so going from B to A. After this lesson, you'll know you're successful if you can describe how changing the scale factor to something greater than 1, less than 1, or just keeping it 1 affects the size of your copy, and if you can explain how scale factors are related when going back and forth between two figures. Let's get started with the first thing. What if the scale factor is just 1? So remember, the scale factor is what you multiply by when you are making a scale copy. So let's say my shape here was 2 squares tall, 2 units tall and it's four units wide. Well, my scale factor is one, so I just need to multiply it by one. Two times one is two. It's still going to be two units tall. It was four units wide, multiplied that by one. It's still four units wide. So, completing the shape, a scale factor of one keeps it the exact same size as it was before. Now, let's look at what happens if the scale factor is greater than 1. So again, I'm going to keep my original shape as 2 tall and 4 wide. This time, I'm going to choose a scale factor that is greater than 1. So I pick 2. So 2 times 2 is 4. So now it's going to be 4 units tall. Keep the same scale factor, 4 times 2 is 8. So it's going to now be 8 units wide. Complete our shape. What happened to our shape? Well, our shape got larger. Multiplying by a scale factor greater than 1 made our shape larger than the original. What if the scale factor was less than 1? So again, we have our original shape here of 2 and 4. What if I multiply it by half? Well, 2 times 1 half is 1. I just had half of the side. So now it's only one unit tall. 4 times half is 2. So now it's only two units wide, half of what was there. Complete our shape, and we can see what happened. Our scale copy is smaller than the original. So if your scale factor is less than 1, so if it's a fraction or a decimal that's less than 1, your scale copy is going to be smaller than the original. Now let's look at how scale factors are related to each other. We have three versions of the thing that we've already looked at. Multiplying by 1, multiplying by 1 half, and multiplying by 2. I added in a fourth one of multiplying by 3 halves, or by 1.5, so we can kind of really see what's happening here. So first, in the top left here, we have our original shape, and we multiplied by 1, and we end up with the same shape, but still 2 tall and 4 wide. Well. What would I need to do to go from the second shape back to the first shape? Well, 4 times what is 4? It's still 1. Now, this example is not very good for seeing what's actually happening here, but we'll come back to it. Let's look at our next example. Multiplying by 1 half. Well, if I work backwards, in order to go from 1 to 2, I would have had to multiply by 2. Or from 2 to 4, I had to multiply by 2. Again, it might not be super obvious what's happening here yet, 
but if we write it as a fraction over 1, it might become more obvious what is actually happening. Let's look at our third shape. We went from 2 to 4 in the original by multiplying by 2, and from 4 to 8 by multiplying by 2. Well, what if we want to go backwards? So 4 to 2, or 8 to 4. To do this, we would have had to multiply by 1 half. If I make my original as 2 over 1 again, you can kind of start to see a pattern emerging. So what is happening here? Let's look at our last area so we can really kind of see what's happening. From our original to our scale copy, we had to multiply by 3 halves, or 1 and a half. So 2 to 3, 3 halves. Well, if I want to go backwards to go from 3 to 2, or from 6 to 4, I end up multiplying by 2 thirds. Looking at this, what can we tell about the scale factors? Well, they are reciprocals of each other. If you look at this last example, to go forward, we had 3 over 2. To go backward, we had 2 over 3. They're flipped. They're reciprocals. If we look at either the second or third example, going forward, we had 2 over 1. Going backward, we had 1 over 2. Again, flipped. Okay? But what about the first example? Well, if we write both of those as fractions over 1, we can see they are still reciprocals of each other. So, scale factor going forward and backward, they are reciprocals. In this lesson, we learned that the size of the scale factor affects the size of our scale copy. If our scale factor is larger than 1, the copy is larger than the original. If the scale factor is less than 1, it's going to be smaller than the original. And if the scale factor is exactly 1, it's going to be the same size as the original. We also learned that going forward and backward, the scale factors are reciprocals of each other. So here we have a triangle going from the left to the right, we had to multiply by 3 over 2. Going from the right to the left, the larger to the smaller, we had to multiply by 2 thirds. They are reciprocals. After completing this lesson, do you now know how to describe the effect of different size scale factors? And can you use reciprocal scale factors to go back and forth between your scale copies? And that's the end of this lesson on the size of the scale factor.